Welcome to Colombia. Today I will tell you everything you can do outside Cartagena. Welcome lovely people and Colombia lovers all around the world. I welcome you to the one and only Colombia Travel Channel. My name is Frank, I'm Swiss and I came to Colombia five years ago and today I run a travel agency here in Bogota. And today I'm going to tell you the 10 best things to do outside Cartagena and there will be not one but two bonus rounds. I will tell you where not to go outside Cartagena and then I also will show you what this weird stuff up there is about. So let's start of course here in Colombia with one fine cup of Colombian coffee. <laughs> I can't without coffee. And if you're going to come to Colombia one day, ah, you will see Colombian coffee, it's just the best. And you will buy a suitcase just to fill it up with Colombian coffee to bring it back home from wherever you are. So let's go and start with top things to do outside Cartagena. Uh, first of all, I give you a little bit background information about Cartagena in Colombia. It's actually the second most touristic city here in Colombia after Bogota. Bogota is number one. And it's also located on the Caribbean coast. And that means the average temperature is comfortable 27 degrees Celsius or 80 Fahrenheit for our US American viewers. Then Cartagena was founded in, I have my note, like always, it was founded in 1533 by the Spaniards. And remember, the first city founded by the Spaniards was 1522. It was Santa Marta, very close, like only a four hours ride from Cartagena. And it was attacked by the Brits and by the pirate Francis Drake because it was a very, very important harbor for the Spaniards where they shipped all their gold back to Europe and so on and so on. And then they constructed those huge walls and those defense installations which make it a UNESCO World Heritage Day. So let's jump into the topic and let's tell you what you can do when you are in Cartagena. You can go to San Basilio de Palenque and maybe you have heard those uh, Afro-Colombian ladies which are dressed beautifully and have all the fruits on their head and you can take pictures and then they charge you. They're called Balenqueras. And San Bisilio is actually the first free town of those Afros here in Colombia. And I think, and even they say Palenque is also considered the first free African town in the Americas. And 2005, it was declared by the UNESCO, I have to read it, masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity. It has 3,500 habitants and also it has something very unique. Its language is a Spanish-based Creole. And it's only one hour, 15 minutes from Cartagena. If you want to go, book a tour and I'm sure you will experience something that most of the people don't experience because most of the people, they usually stay within Cartagena. And then number two on the list, you can go to the mud volcano El Totumo. It's just one hour from Cartagena and uh, 
so you can imagine you you drive out somewhere in the middle of nowhere and then you have this little hill but it's a volcano and within you have a mud basin and then you have to line up and it depends because you will see that from Cartagena they ship busloads over there and sometimes the lineup is kilometers as far as you can see. But as soon you get into the volcano you will have a bath in the mud and before you get out there will uh, some, some guys they will try to get the mud back into the volcano because otherwise they would lose all the mud and then you walk down from the volcano you go to the shore and then in the sea in the ocean you can clean yourself and that's the experience. Oh, I would say most uh, people doing that are backpackers and Colombians but if you're interested in doing it even in Cartagena on the street you can buy that tour. Also number three on the list Islas del Rosario. That's actually a perfect plan because there you will experience the best Caribbean feeling. You can go there by different ways. You can either go by bus to Baru or you charter your private boat which is my preferred way going there or you can book a group tour and then you go to different spots and they will charge you on different spots. So the group tours I, I don't really recommend but Islas Rosarios, it's a great plan. You can snorkel, you can swim, you can... Ah, it's just beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. And also, if you're interested on weekends or long weekends where you have festivos, um, national holidays, you can, especially with the private boat, with the charter boat, you go to Cholón and then you can party and see all the cool Colombians drinking and partying and uh, you can drink and have overpriced food. Cholon is the party island in Rosario Islands. Then we go to number four. That's actually a very good plan. You can go to Phoenix Beach and Tierra Bomba. Usually they have their own boat which is like three or four times in the morning they leave. It's just a 10 minutes ride. It's perfect. It's not, uh, it's, it's kind of a beach club. You can have your beach bed and the food is good, there's some music to chill and hang out. It's a, it's a cool place to escape for, from the city for one day. And uh, it's not the perfect bed spot for swim because the, the big cargo ships, they go in and outside there between Cartagena and uh, Tierra Bomba. Then we already have number five. And this is not really outside the city, but it's outside the tourist area. And this is why I put it on the list. It's going to the Mercado de Basurto. This is really a local market and they sell fish, they sell goods, they sell everything. It's a big mess. It's a big chaos. If you're not the type of uh, traveler who is a bit adventurous and a little brave, and you look like me, very white, blue eyes, tall, and people can see from far that you're a non-Latin American. It might be not the best plan for you, but if you want to have a, a really great experience, a really local experience, you have also different operators in Cartagena offering going to the market, and it's always good to have a guide with you. He can explain you everything they sell. And if you're interested, in Colombian experiences, try it. The, the market is great. And, but be aware, it's messy, it's dirty, and uh, in Cartagena it's hot, and it's a very special experience, but I like it. Then, number six already. You can go to the TPC Caribana golf course, about 35 minutes from Cartagena, and play some golf having a great shore, having a beach club, having a nice hotel, having a great day playing golf, chilling out. This is a great plan from Cartagena. If you are a golf player, if you are non-golf player, but you consider yourself a sailor, 
Then you also can charter sailing boats or motorboats or whatever boats in Cartagena. You can go for one day sailing or fishing because you have a big harbor, You're, you have actually different harbors in Cartagena and you have lots of sailing boats, also sailing boats going to Panama. You have many options, just go direct there, uh, talk with the different captains and maybe you will have a good price for a great day trip. Then number eight on the list, the aviary. This is a kind of bird zoo. You go to Baru by car and it's a great place. You will find many birds of Colombia and as you know, Colombia is the country which has most bird species in the world. It's today, I think, 1940 and in the aviary you find many birds. It's a good thing and uh, yeah, and it's a great alternative plan for leaving Cartagena for one day. Then we have number nine on the list and there's a little history about that. And this is Santa Cruz de Mombos. And it's also on the UNESCO list. It's also one of the heritage towns of Colombia. And it's actually beautiful. It's on the Magdalena River. And uh, the city center is very historic, very beautiful, but it's also very humid. I went there, I think three years ago, I drove there by car. And I remember there was not much traffic, almost none, some motorbikes. And I got there late afternoon and they have those, uh, those uh, bumps, bumper, bumpers, beat bumpers. And they're not like the normal ones because they're short and they're like that high. So I was driving with about 50 and because the sun was quite low, I didn't see it and I thought I lost both axles of my car. It was a strong hit. So I stopped and uh, walked around the car to find out if I still have my wheels, if not half of my car is missing. Oh, but thanks God, the car was good, everything fine. And then I got to Mompos and uh, but it was so humid and so hot and I didn't sleep well. I just stayed there for one night. But for foreigners, uh, Mompos is actually a quite famous destination and you can get there from Cartagena in five to six hours. And there are also boat tours where you can go on the Magdalena River to Mompos. Then we already have number 10. This is Santiago de Tolu. This is in the south of Cartagena. You drive three hours and it's a very Colombian town where people go to have some beach time. There are not too many beaches actually, but it's a, it's a nice little town. No, it's, there's nothing is going on over there. It's really quiet and as I said, not too much beach, but uh, you have a, a cool coastline. And you have boats bringing you to uh, Isla Mucura and Isla Tintipan. Uh, and there are more islands, but those are the most famous ones. And this is also if you want to escape from Cartagena, you speak a little Spanish, you're not afraid of traveling and uh, discovering new stuff, wanting a local experience. This is a great option. Then the first bonus round also outside of Cartagena and usually they offer that with uh, with uh, group tours going by boat to the Rosario Islands it's the ocean area and you will find their so-called happy dolphins showing tricks and stuff so it's like sea world light very small um, and yeah, I'm not a big fan of having animals showing tricks and uh, so I think this is no go, you, you shouldn't do it. That's my personal opinion. If you like that kind of stuff, do it. I don't recommend it. And also everybody always is talking about Playa Blanca. You find it online all the time and everybody says, ah, oh, beautiful, great. And ah, oh, it's so wrong. It's so... 
Playa Blanca can be such a terrible experience. If you want to have a beach day and you want to have your peace and uh, enjoy, this might be the wrong destination. Because the beach once was beautiful and the sea is still beautiful, but you have all the beach vendors, they're harassing you every five minutes. You have the massage ladies touching you and say, oh, it's all for free, all for free, one minute free massage. And uh, they're touching you and you're like, no, don't touch me. Ah! And <laughs> so this is what's going on. And then you have those jet skis uh, um, almost crashing into the people swimming in the, in the water because they want to sell their services. And ah, it's just, maybe on a quiet day, it's better, but no, it's just... Don't go to Playa Blanca if you, if you want to have a quality beach day. If you're a backpacker, go to Playa Blanca, enjoy that mess, pay 20,000 for a beer. Um, but I don't recommend it. And then we have the second bonus round. And before showing you how that works, I wish you all the best. From Bogota, send you the best wishes. If you're not subscribed yet, do it now, hit the bell. You'll find more information in the description sections. And if you have questions or comments, write them down. This is actually my coronavirus gym solution, my indoor gym. Because in Colombia we had to stay inside, locked down totally, so I had to make sure I stay in shape. So now I will show you what I did here inside, not to get too fat in those weeks. We are having the lockdown. And this is from my curtains and this stuff here is from the car. This is how it works.